yourself and humorous. Welcome guys, this has been uh, my by far the most researched topic that I've ever done. Um, a lot of the stuff I talk about and I'm going to talk about is stuff that I've like researched over the years of weightlifting and dieting and, and all that fun stuff, but this one has been relatively new to me. It's actually relatively new even in the, uh, the, the science world, I guess you could say. Um, so this is actually really cutting edge stuff uh and of course we're talking about gut flora gut microbiota um your microbiome all that fun stuff so first of all what is it uh, i know i talked about it and why you shouldn't be drinking dairy in the last video because it affects it poorly um basically it's uh it's your second brain um, it chooses whether you produce vitamins, chooses whether you produce or lose fat, uh, basically controls your hunger, uh, cravings especially. It's, uh, it, it's nothing to take lightly. And, um, the Western diet that everyone is born into, the, the microbiome diet that we're born into, is, uh disaster especially uh not just not just the diet in general um especially the uses of antibiotics and that type of type of medicine that um his main goal is to clear out your uh your biome and your gut is been has led to disastrous effects I, again it's another case of industrial society uh destroying the human race so some interesting things that I've learned about this that uh, you can tell your friends and, and it'll show you just how important it is. Um, so autism has obviously been on the rise in the past few decades. A lot of it is due to uh, mothers waiting later in their lives to have children. The other reason might be because their children have low gut microbiome or gut micro microbe diversity um it's also found in people that have parkinson's so later on in life if your family is family members are developing parkinson's you might be able to reverse that or if you yourself know that you might might do that then increasing your gut microbiome diversity which is i will tell you how to how to fix that at the end um can stop that but uh for children it's uh it's a relatively new thing and um, they actually found, and uh, the, a lot of this is, uh, a few of these things are going to be about uh, fecal matter transplants. So basically they take you, the healthy poop from one rat or from one human um, and, and implant it into the intestines or the, the, the gut of the other subject and fixes it um not not joking around uh the extent that this has been done has uh led autism mice to be less autistic and not be autistic at all in some cases uh they've done it between obese mice and thin mice where this was a really interesting one uh the lean mice that uh that couldn't really gain weight or or really didn't have a a heavy hunger transplanted it with the obese uh, microbiome of the, the fat mice and just about overnight it developed a voracious appetite and turned into an obese mouse uh, they did it with introverted versus extroverted mice too so if you're ever wondering why am i so shy why am i less outgoing maybe 
And in the future, they'll do uh, fecal matter transplants, and you can just change your personality that way. But uh, until we get there, until the more research is done, um, we're left with fixing it ourselves. So uh, how how do you do that? Um, and what are the what are the best ways to do it while being a, a weightlifter, body builder, just for nutrition? Um, it's kind of tough. I, I guess uh, the the ketogenic diet isn't actually the best diet for this. Um, it's I, in my opinion, it's still the best diet for weight loss. And once you get to the certain the point where you're okay with uh, your weight and you can do more of a like lean bulk or just maintenance, uh, probably switching to a paleo or a, a Mediterranean diet is going to be the best thing. Um, of course, uh, you're going to want to take probiotics. Uh, the probiotic I take is gastrus, just because it's easy, it's chewable, um, it's pretty cheap, and compared to buying just yogurt or a bunch of fermented foods, it's much cheaper, much much more efficient. Um, if you're not, if you don't have that available, typically any good probiotic, um, you can kind of look at the ingredients on it, make sure it contains L-ruteri. Um, for the most part, those are going to be good, but probiotics are really only they're only half the battle in this. Uh, you have to take prebiotics too. So uh, the easiest way to kind of look at your gut, your your body, um, now that you're aware of it, is uh, think of it like a landscape. So um, if you're farming, you need to put down soil. You need to put down. Uh, fertilizer stuff that's going to nourish the, the seeds that you you drop into it in this case it's bacteria a little bit more disgusting for some people but same idea so you're gonna want to eat a lot of cellulose or, or dietary fiber foods um, cellulose uh, vegetables are great prebiotics fruit uh, things that are gonna digest well um, things that don't digest well are like things like very fatty animal parts, uh, animal meats, visceral meats, which is something that I'm going to be talking about later on too, is avoiding visceral meats. Um, yeah, processed foods are very bad for this. Um, you really, this is kind of where the whole organic and grass-fed beef thing comes into play. Because uh, those things, in ingesting those things actually plays a huge part on your gut biome. Um, otherwise, I mean, if you're eating beef from, just like cheap beef from Kroger or whatever, it's, uh, the cows are being fed basically with corn, and that's, cows can't even digest corn. So all of their digestion is all screwed up. That's, go that's causing a bad gut mi microbiome for their whole body. They're in turn slaughtered, killed, given to you, and that's not a good mix, um, especially on top of all the uh, hormones and stuff that are being ingested. It's just, it's time to make the switch. Um, fish, fish is a very good one. Fish is a little bit cheaper. Um, but back to what I was saying. Um, so take probiotics, take prebiotics. Um the other things that are really important too actually that believe it or not are um, being very stress free if you are in the middle of a meal uh, let's say you're eating and uh, you get a, a text message or an email reminding you that a bill's due or a text message from somebody that you don't like or don't want to talk to and your body goes into that kind of stress mode, you might feel it in your gut where your butthole kind of tightens and doesn't feel very good. Um, that's That basically means that you, you can still finish your meal, you can still finish eating whatever you're eating, uh, but nothing is going to be digested. Uh, digestion has completely stopped in your stomach. Um, you're still masticizing the food with your stomach, with your uh teeth but your stomach isn't doing the contractions to actually break it down into molecules it's just done uh, the reason for that is is basically because you've gone into a fight-or-flight mode and the first thing that stops during fight-or-flight mode is digestion that's often why when people get scared they have to poop um, it 
it just kind of makes sense when you think of it that way. But uh, having a stressful life and being under a bunch of stress while you're eating um, doesn't it doesn't just cause stress eating, but it actually causes you to put on excess weight because you're not getting the proper nutrients that you should be um, from your food. I mean, sometimes you it, it can even take up to eight hours for your body to get out of that shock and to actually start digesting food. So how can you get past that? Um, I didn't really research any stress relief uh, activities. Um, I, 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 the ones they mentioned were basically uh, mindfulness and meditation. So if you're into that strain of things, then by all means go for it. For the most part, I think just being able to relax and set out 10 to 15 minutes for yourself a day and just not do anything, not have your phone on, not be on a computer, not have TV on, just kind of relax. That will do a ton for you. And um, listen to your gut. A lot of these uh, gut sensations that uh, you kind of feel, like the butterflies in your stomach, um, that queasiness that you feel when you are might be very nervous for a test or something or or even just that like absolute no appetite when you know that like your shit's gonna hit the fan um those are all pretty much just your gut talking to your brain there's actually a, a nerve that connects the two of them um together called the vagus nerve and it's 90 per 90% of the signals are sent from your gut to the brain. So it's, a uh, it's, it's very important to listen to that and to make sure that you're doing everything that you can to respect your gut, to be the least stressed That's you can. That's pretty much it. Um, to I might do, the diversity uh, I'll probably do a follow-up video on this, um, just because there's one thing that I wanted to talk about uh, that is going to tie into stress eating, and that's going to be the, the food reward value system. So that should be coming out a little bit sooner, just because I don't have to read as much. This one, I actually had to read like an entire book and a couple studies for you. So I still don't understand it 100%. It started got, getting really confusing and contradictory at the end, but for the main part, I think I, I, think I got it.